Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of In the Light of the Quran. Today we have a new light that we will try to take from the Quran and benefit from it. It is very important and it is something we can benefit from because it deals with something practical and it deals with the importance and the position of this ummah to all humanity, the excellence of the Islamic nation among all other nations and how we Muslims today are supposed to act in order to get back to this high position that Allah has granted us. It is su such a wonderful honor that Allah has given us, such a wonderful position and a high and lofty station among all human beings that Allah has given us. But unfortunately, I can say today that the Muslims have done away with that and they have started chasing their desires. So really, uh, he here is a call for all Muslims of sound intellect to go back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to assume again the wonderful position that Allah has granted us which we will enjoy in this world and in the hereafter if we fulfill the conditions that Allah has put for us but if we fail to do that then we will be the lowest among, among all nations it is such an important and beautiful role that we are supposed to play among humanity because the goodness of the Muslim Ummah is not restricted to its own individuals, but it is actually transitive. It, it, it affects other people, it helps, it, it, you know, it gives, puts light in the way, it illuminates the way of all other nations. And this is what we are supposed to do. So those few verses from Surah Al-Baqarah really teach us a lot about the importance of the Muslim Ummah and some of the merits and the, some of the great advantages Allah has granted this Ummah. So inshallah we will start with the recitation of those few verses and then we will reflect on them and try to benefit from their meanings. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Sayaqoolu s-sufahau minan nasi ma wallahum an qiblatihimu allati kanu alayha قل لله المشرق والمغرب يهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا لتكونوا لتكونوا شهداء على الناس ويكون الرسول عليكم شهيدا وما جعلنا القبلة التي كنت عليها إلا لنعلم إلا لنعلم من يتبع الرسول من من ينقلب على عقبيه وإن كانت لكبيرة إلا على الذين هدى الله وما كان الله ليضيع إيمانكم إن الله بالناس لرؤوف رحيم قد نرى تقلب قد نرى تقلب وجهك في السماء فلنولينك قبلة ترضاها فول وجهك شطر المسجد الحرام وحيث ما كنتم فولوا وجوهكم شطرة وإن الذين أوتوا الكتاب ليعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم 
وما الله بغافل عما يعملون ولئن أتيت الذين أوتوا الكتاب بكل آية ما تبعوا قبلتك وما أنت بتابع قبلتهم وما بعضهم بتابع قبلة بعض ولئن اتبعت أهواءهم من بعد ما جاءك من العلم من بعد ما جاءك من العلم إنك إذا لمن الظالمين Welcome back to your show in the light of the Quran. Now those beautiful verses from Surah Al-Baqarah talk about an important incident that happened in the history or at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. About 16 or 17 months after the migration from Mecca to Medina, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received the command from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to change the direction of the Qibla on, during the prayer, to change it from Baytul Maqdis in Al-Quds from Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem to Al-Ka'bah in Mecca. And the Prophet ﷺ, prior to that had always wanted to face Al-Ka'bah whenever he prayed. Even when he was in Mecca, he would face Al-Ka'bah but make, place it or make it between him and Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And this is what Allah says to him that we saw that you were raising your sight to the heavens waiting for the command from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to give you the command to face Al-Ka'ba while you prayed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed those verses prior to the command of, or just to convey the command to turn to, to Al-Ka'ba, to Mecca, when we make the prayer. And surprisingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear in those verses that سَيَقُولُ السُّفَهَاء The foolish people, the people of misguidance, will say, what made, what made them change the direction of the prayer from Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa to Al-Ka'ba? What made them do that? And Allah describes them as foolish and misguided people, Sufaha. That those people are Sufaha, they're foolish. You know, they don't have brains to think with. They don't use the intellect that Allah has given them. And despite this verse being there, the Jews, after seeing this, those verses, after hearing those verses, and after knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers to face Al-Ka'ba when, whenever they prayed, still when they, heard the, when they heard those verses saying that the foolish people will say this and that, still they said that. Still they objected. They said, what made those Muslims change the direction of the Qibla? What made them do that? What made them do that? Still, although they had the description that they are foolish, they did it. They could have proven that the Qur'an wasn't from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is from Allah. And they did it. So, they objected to why did the Muslims do that? Why did they change the direction of the Qibla? They were just trying to create doubt about Islam and about the Prophet sallallahu and his companions. But Allah says, to Allah belong the east and the west and all directions. It's under the command of Allah. It's not up to you or Jewish people, or Christians, or Muslims, to choose what you like to choose. No, you have to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, it is Allah who guides whomever He wills to a straight path. So this is some kind of a consolation to the Muslims that, and reassurance that you are on the straight path. Don't worry about that. As long as you are obedient to Allah, then Allah will guide you to the straight path. Don't lis listen to, those, to the accusations of those people. Don't listen to that. Just focus on what Allah tells you to do. And then Allah tells the Muslims of the high position that He has granted them. And they can achieve this position by being obedient to Allah. Because in the middle of all those accusations, all those rumors, all those uh, attempts to blemish the beauty of Islam and the Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the believers, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَ And thus we have made you a middle ummah. A middle nation. Now the word wasat in Arabic means the middle course, the middle. It means the, uh, also it means the top of everything, the highest 
grade or the highest level in everything. This is why the Prophet ﷺ says that there is a house in the middle of paradise. This is the literal translation of the hadith, but it also means in the highest rank of paradise. So wasat in Arabic means the middle, it also means the highest rank and the highest level. So thus we have made you the best nation. This is the meaning of the verse. Allah has made this ummah, Allah has made this ummah, the ummah of Islam, the middle nation. It is, why? Because it's a middle. It doesn't go to extremes. It's always in the middle. It follows the middle course and the right course. And also, it is in the highest rank among all other nations by following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, here is a lesson that we can learn that no matter what accusations people create about you and about your religion and about everything you do, don't pay attention to that. Don't be bothered by that. Just focus on what Allah has given you. Focus on the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all those accusations will mean nothing to you and will affect you and will never affect you no matter what they say. And this is something that we need today. Many Muslims today, especially people who are involved in da'wah, they say, you know, the West... The people in the West, they accuse us of certain things, of this and that. So why don't we just do away with that? For example, they say, well, the Muslims are very, uh, fundam they are fundamentalists, they are extremists, because they consider, for example, music to be haram. And they hold on to the beard, and they hold on to some teachings that, are, that have become part of the past. These things are, you know, are backward. So why do the Muslims hold on to that? Those are accus accusations by the enemies of Islam. Unfortunately, some Muslims who have weakness in terms of knowledge, weakness in terms of Iman, they take those accusations seriously and they want to change Islam. They say, why don't we change the Islamic discourse? Why don't we change that? Why don't we change it and make Islam, moderate Islam, rejuvenate it? We say to those, listen to the, this guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have been made the best ummah, ummah. You are witnesses over all mankind. So hold on to your religion. People are supposed to follow you rather than you following them. So when we understand this high position that Allah has given us, we should not stoop and settle for something that is lower than that and start and accept the, uh, the misguidance that other people want us to follow. Let's follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah will preserve us and Allah will give us and Allah will put us back in the high position that He has designed for us. But we have to meet those conditions. We have to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave the guidance of those people, leave their accusations and put our trust in the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we will be in the highest position which is to be witnesses over all mankind. They are supposed to learn from us. They are supposed to follow our example rather than us following their own example because the example that we are supposed to follow is that which is the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we find in the Quran. Hopefully we can benefit from this beautiful reflection on the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hopefully inshallah next time we will meet to discuss and reflect on another light that we will try to take from the Quran and benefit from. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Day and night